Okay, so now we're talking uh, with the ability to show diagrams and so forth. Right. So what's on your mind? So, um, so going back to the self-sustaining, self-generating uh, whole system uh, model that is the blueprint for everything, right? Now, why are things so fucked up? Is a question that many people have, and, and the movie Thrive described how everything is designed to thrive. So the question was, why is it not thriving? The man here in the movie follows the money and uncovers what he believes to be a conspiracy that is basically robbing the system of its free energy flow. Right, well, I've thought a lot about this problem of the billionaires of the world. So if you look at the U.S. billionaires, you've got some new billionaires, like the guys who run Google and so forth, and I do believe they have a different point of view, even if they attend Bilderberg, than the old people with Tom Mel. Okay, so basically, the way I've been, I've been seeing it is that it's a expression of consciousness, that humans have been stuck in the last six to 8,000 years in, uh, in, in, in the grips of a pathology, which is called ego. Now, ego defines itself as in dualistic terms, me versus you, us versus them, mine versus not mine, etc. This seems simple, but if you take that into equation and you run it, you have standing armies, you have empires, you have uh, greed, you have okay, people so, wanting to hold. So let me finish the thought right, here. Okay. So basically we've fallen into history, is is basically what it's been called, right? So yeah, that's what we're the dominator it. culture. So it's a dominator culture based on competition. Exactly right. Exactly with the right. limited notion that we have unlimited resources. And, now, and, and, what's so let me, obvious let me is interject. Okay. okay. So um, the bottom line is when you say uh, when people talk about a modern conspiracy, if you go back to the invention of agriculture, whether it's twelve thousand years ago or eight thousand years ago, within a few years after that invention, raider culture started to emerge. Mm -hmm who could live off of the people that were storing food. And the first uh, nation that traditionally has been taught about is Sumer, uh, which uh, history begins at Sumer, it's a famous book. And this became a vast bureaucracy very quickly with enormous cities. Um, so we've had this problem uh, since the beginning of a, of a warrior class. And there's also been Thurston Veblen who wrote a book on the theory of the leisure class, describing them as a vestige of the warrior class, including their ornate trappings. So um, I just wanted to interject that, sorry. Mm -hmm. No, that's good, yeah. Well, and what it does, it, it begins to use up resources in a gluttonous way, more, more, and then you need more slaves, and then you need more resources, more right, land right, right. Well, that's to the continue whole... to sustain. Now, what happens in a finite system, which the planet Earth is? It's not an infinite system, it's finite. At least at this at well, third dimensional level now. There are people who, who would argue technology can uh, can be a multiplier. At this level of consciousness, at this level of technology, we are at a finite level of, of in, in energy extraction. Now, when when people gain this kind of power, you extrapolate that the, the you know for that thousands of years, and you have a a system such as the one we have now, where there's one percent with ninety percent of the resources and uh, ninety percent with barely making it, right? Okay. So, um, <clears throat> I wanted to just segue. So, uh, this show, Thrive, reminded me a lot of the work I had done, and I wanted to show you basically what was, I hope, unique about my contribution to the idea of um, taking a look at all of the advances we have in automation and so forth, where actually people's standard of living should be rushed, skyrocketing up, but it's only happening to the few because of the power structures we have. So uh, this is um, basically an evolution of, of system I started in 93, uh, 1993, which describes these uh, four quadrants. And um, so basically, quadrant one is productive and functional. And uh, to the far left, you have non-productive, and to the far right, you have productive, and then on the top, you have a functional, and on the bottom, you have non-functional or dysfunctional or function disadvantaged. So what it boils down to is that basically quadrant one, the productive functional quadrant, if you drive everyone into that, you basically eliminate most of the basis of taxation because 
Uh, the non-productive quadrant are basically the people that protect us from ourselves. Much of the non-productive is the arms industry, um, speculative industries such as finance, insurance, and real estate, um, and so forth. And then a lot of that is to deal with the non-productive class, the non-functional class, the poverty class, which under the current conditions is hard to emerge out of, and in fact more people are falling into and then we have the, um, the people who are deployed uh, in uh, real wealth production areas, but are um, not at operating at near their full potential. They're not deployed into their optimal area, nor are they um, developed enough as a, uh, as a, uh, a workman or a, or a uh, tradesman or a, uh, whatever occupation they might have. So what I discovered when I did this is that we only need about 25% of our population to handle this productive functional quadrant. And um, there was a guy in the 19th century who said that men must always sell um, their services but never their time or they'll become subjugated. So it's an interesting idea. So that's when I, um, and I'll end here and let you have your uh, say, um, that's when I started looking at libertarianism because Obama didn't give us any more freedom and didn't stop concentration of wealth. He only created that uh, uh, universal insurance system, which benefited big corporations, although I'm not saying it wasn't needed for the 48 million people that supposedly it's going to cover. Um, but um, the main guys are on Paul. There's the libertarians. We need to pass through the uh, right-left paradigm. I no longer look at right-wing people as automatically people I'm going to jump down the throat of. I listen to them, um, and it really dis disappoints me. My liberal family, who's just extremely skeptical about anybody that's called quote-unquote conservative because there's one party, really, and they play us off against each other. And so then comes the union of the people on the progressive side who want what everybody should want, which is that people have freedom and prosperity and the ability to pursue uh, their happiness and their dream. Uh, and, um, and so this union, I believe, can be found in the concept of Jeffersonian democracy. So I want to put on the backdrop of the screen here, while I ask you to comment on your thoughts, is Wiki Jeffersonian democracy. And we'll just put that in the backdrop here. Okay. And let's see. Here we go. Core ideals. So the core political value of America is republicanism. Civic, citizens have a civic duty to aid the state and resist corruption, especially monarchism and aristocracy. So... Right. My only problem there is aid the state. Which state? You know, who's controlling? Who's got the dials on the media systems that are in, infiltrating the uh, homes of our uh, every uh, citizen? Now, I take it down to the core. Well, it, I this think is from the late 18th century, okay, when gotcha. they were still defending from the British. I think the issue goes much deeper. I think we, we have to take it to the core, to the fundamental core. How are we going to feed 7 billion people's healthy whole foods? How are we going to uh, give water to 7 billion people? Yeah, and that's a form As of inflation that people don't account for. Normal people can't afford the very food they took for granted 60 years ago, right? Right. So, so the bottom line is this planet has become unsustainable not because of its nature. Its nature is self-sustainable. It's a whole system environment. Well, it's, it's a become non economy. It's become unsustainable because... This ego structure that is manifesting in our corporate multi-billion dollar in, uh, corporations, um, they have disconnected humans from source of energy, whether that energy is water, soil. Yeah, resources. Resources. You deprive everyone of the resources and then they're your slaves. And that's the whole point of communitarianism. So if I can just right. show... Well, I think we need to move beyond the isms, actually. I think we need to really get to the <laughs> to the bottom of what's going on here. So. So if we're looking at free energy, if we're looking at the Taurus as a system that is self-generating based on its own internal process of energy, mm -hmm. right? Uh, we're not plugged into anything. Our own bio system is self-generating, right? So, so why do we have to go and... Well, in a way and, you and, should and, say that men have an inalienable right 
to their claim of uh, fresh water and of access to decent agriculture, perhaps through a co-op community farm. So the point is that communities need to re-exert their control over their manufacturing, over their water and land resources, over making sure people get houses they own forever when they get them, not a hundred years later because of the, they're doing interest-based things like exactly. community barn raisings. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, uh, so there's a lot we can do. So exactly. So basically the, the pyramid scheme this historical pyramid scheme where you have the 1% up here with the levers controlling the masses needs to collapse. The centralized yeah, power... Yeah, here's how you do it. And the the central, he said. Let me finish my thought. Okay. The centralized power grid structure system, whether it's financial, food, uh, medical, whatever, it's all based on this pyramid structure which Thrive eloquently describes. Now what we need to do is dismantle this, okay? Now, how do we do that? Is your question well, right? The, the way we do it because right now we we're dependent. Simply, we simply, but let me. I, I can't resist. We simply stop buying from the core and start distributing all money and energy in in our community. If you pay twenty percent more, even double, if you can afford it, buy things from other local community people or other local community enterprises in other places. Places where people are reinvesting directly in people and their communities. There's nothing wrong with buying from a Portland-based community-based business. And so what I want to just briefly describe is a model, the economic model of, a, of restoring people to their resources, reconnecting them to their resources. So what I describe here on the top, you have optional economy, free market entertainment, high consumption lifestyle. People are free to pursue this if they like, right? And it has nothing to do with the co-op services, as far as I'm concerned, although you're free to start a co-op you want. But the utility industries uh, is, would fundamentally, in the current construction, be based around a co-op bank. Although bank may be an obsolete concept in the way we try to structure these things. And you have uh, communications uh, infrastructure, um, which, uh, are, uh, which is basically internet, telephone, wireless. And then you have... Uh, education and medicine, which can be combined by creating a co-op based around uh, education from the very early stage to the PhD program. And then in the same token, you have the ability to create housing and public spaces, uh, uh, access to food, and then uh, co-op energy. So there, basically, I found there were about eight utility industries that if you created these things to drive costs down to zero instead of to make profit because it's a worker owner. Mm -hmm. But you can decline to work or they can decline to employ you as far as I've figured it out and then you just have to substitute cash. Mm -hmm. If nobody wants you at the medical research clinic, before we solve that problem in detail, we can just say you would be asked to pay a contribution monthly mm -hmm. and we would make it cost mm -hmm. because that's not our intent. But you cannot guarantee people uh, to be in your working organization um, because it will, uh, it's just an impossible situation for us at this time to uh, think of. Right. So all those pieces can be worked out. Now, I think what needs to be happening now is we're exactly what you're doing, building the next ship as our current ship is sinking, right? So instead of trying to patch it up with Obama versus Rodney or this versus that, we need to start building the new model and, and dis- Engage from the old, well, we're non violently, doing, because that's a piece into this puzzle, right? Well, no, it's also a piece that we don't even have an option to go against these guys but now so, with guns, would be absolutely you got to convince no them case. to drop their guns. That's your only way out. Just like in Russia, when they had the cat, the, they climbed the tanks, right? And, and the soldiers wouldn't shoot them in, in Tiananmen Square. There's a picture of a guy holding off a whole tank by himself. They could easily kill him, but they weren't willing to kill protesters. Right. We've got to get enough people in the security forces to not participate or to resist. Mm -hmm. uh, if we tried to do it, we would just be uh, greasing the treads of their tanks with our guts. Exactly. So basically rebuilding a model based on self-sustainability, whole systems, and taking it off the pyramid model where oil, banking, and... Um, yeah, well, he got all, all the things, components right? right. I just don't disagree. I just disagree with his conspiratorial um, uh, claims without more evidence in the movie. I studied the Illuminati when I was a kid, and there are a lot of kooks that don't understand that these old Masonic societies were also to keep people from being persecuted if their views were known publicly. Um, 